Let's see how Jehovah has been there for Court, a widower, as he deals with the pain of losing his wife. Miriam and I had been able to experience many blessings from Jehovah, able to go on different assignments with Paraguay, Nigeria, Zambia, and then we, we packed up all of our belongings from home, took up everything in our life, and drove across the United States from California to Patterson, and within a couple of months, she was diagnosed with ALS. We were crushed. Drove back to California, and there we just tried to do everything we can to help her. Nothing worked, and she passed away. And so it was extremely difficult. She was my best friend. This is what I like to call a tear segment from this called a segment that's here not to teach anyone anything, but to capitalize on someone's suffering, filming them, and exploiting their story to make you feel something. After all, if you hear the story, you'd think there's no way to get over the death of a partner without the help of this cult, because if you are in this cult, you literally have nobody else to help you in tough circumstances. So you should always make sure you're in good standing so Jehovah's Witnesses help you when you need help. Well, it may feel this way to us, but again, the scripture says that by God's power, I can scale this wall. So sticking with the goal of pioneering, uh, help me to get moving and then help me to also want to try and reach out for other goals which is uh, going back to do temporary work at Bethel. It's a privilege to be able to go to Bethel and every day you're, you're working for Jehovah. The solution to his grief wasn't actually therapy or even being with his friends. The solution to this is a solution to everything where you are in this cult. Work harder for the cult. It doesn't matter what the issue is. If you're a Jehovah's Witness, that issue will be resolved by you working harder for this cult. And while working on something can be good to take your mind off things, that's where this cult wants your mind to be forever. You have to bury down your issues with indoctrination and free labor for this cult, repressing them until they surface back up. You have some sort of episode and Jehovah's Witnesses tell you to repress it once Again, it's no coincidence that, at least from anecdotal and personal experience, most Jehovah's Witnesses are on antidepressants. Jehovah, what he has in store for each and every one of us is not what we're dealing with now, but it's going to be paradise conditions, not have the issues that we're dealing with today. Jehovah's helping me scale the wall and helping me move forward. Court stays busy. He gives to others, and Jehovah continues to give right back to him. See, it's all about staying busy and repressing your issues until Jehovah comes and makes things right. That's one of the biggest reasons why this cult is damaging the mental health of every follower, because this is not the right way of dealing with things. This simply teaches you to repress your feelings instead of dealing with with them. And any perceived dwelling on those issues will only be seen as a lack of spirituality because, after all, this religion tells you that if you were doing things Jehovah's way, you would have already gotten over whatever issue you're dealing with. But what else, according to this broadcast, can the Bible tell us to help us get over the death of our spouse? So, Jehovah loves you. Please, do not allow Satan to create doubts in your mind. Doubts regarding our Heavenly Father's approval. Instead, see the commendation and the love expressed by your brothers and sisters as coming from Jehovah. Jehovah uses them. 
Oh, yeah, the Jehovah uses Jehovah's Witnesses to help your narrative. The arguably only benefit of being a Jehovah's Witness is the community that you get when you are one of them. That's why Jehovah's Witnesses have to use the narrative of Jehovah uses Jehovah's Witnesses to comfort you. Because that's literally the closest you get to feeling any help from Jehovah properly. And how else does he help you? Well, by controlling what you're allowed to read and believe in, of course. Yes. You are especially protected by our Heavenly Father. For example, He protects you from spiritual harm. He equips you with what you need in order to avoid danger, and so you are able to safeguard your friendship with Him. By means of His Word and the publication, Jehovah makes His loving guidance and protection stand out to you. In Jehovah Witnessy, protection almost always means an arbitrary prohibition that this cult decided you need to abide by. There's nothing in the Bible that tells you to only consume content from JW.org. In fact, the Bible never tells you to go to other places to get your information from other than the Bible. <laughs> However, to Jehovah's Witnesses, consuming this boring content and abiding by their made-up rules is not only necessary, but has to be seen as God talking to you directly, protecting you by telling you not to like and subscribe to my apostate channel. However, what happens when you as a Jehovah's Witness realize that you're not getting any actual help from God? Well, this talk actually goes into that. What we discussed so far was something you heard many times before, nothing new. And yet, there are these moments where we just would like Jehovah to speak directly to us, saying, I see you, I see your works, I see your love, and I will not forget you. What can we do in these very moments? Yes, they actually acknowledge that. For most people, this help received by Jehovah won't actually be anywhere near enough the help you need and you might even realize that it seems like you're dealing with stuff worse than worldly people. So what can you do then? What you need to always do? Double down your indoctrination and cult. This time by using a bunch of leading questions to reason yourself into repressing your thoughts. Now God's words need to sound down in our mind and heart so that we are influenced by it. How can we accomplish this? By allowing our Bible reading to affect us deep inside. So as we meditate about what we read, we can ask us the question, do I really believe what I just read? Why am I sure that Bible examples are not isolated events, but a pattern of Jehovah's dealings with his loyal ones. Have I not seen and experienced this personally? Don't I see very good reason to believe that through the scriptures, Jehovah is talking to me personally? Meditating about these questions will help us to feel Jehovah's sentiments are meant for us personally. And this in turn will help us to align our thinking with God's thinking. Yes, have you not seen examples of Jehovah helping you? Don't you see that Jehovah is the answer? These leading questions motivate you to answer yes, not because it's true, but because you know as a Jehovah's Witness that that's the right answer. If you don't see examples of God leading your life, the issue is with you not living up to Jehovah's standards so he can bless you. Answering these questions truthfully, like saying, no, I have actually not seen any example of Jehovah helping me, would be so against your religion and your coding as a member that most Jehovah's Witnesses simply prefer to answer by lying to themselves and saying that they have seen evidence of Jehovah because they know that admitting the opposite would lead them to a path that can only end in apostasy and shunning. Very few actually realize that the only reason why they feel like they need to answer yes to these questions is because their religion told them to. And those are the few that end up questioning their beliefs properly and hopefully watching these videos. But that's all for now. If you want to see the full version of this JW Broadcasting Analysis, it's already up for Patreon and YouTube supporters. Otherwise, you can subscribe and turn on your notifications so you get reminded as soon as they're up so you don't miss them.